what's up my name is Technobo here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this video i'll show you how to install and use spicedify in ways you probably didn't know in a nice quick tutorial if you don't know what spicedify is well basically it's a skinning update or extension rather for spotify that allows you to apply your own skins themes and different extensions to the spotify application of course, if you use Spotify in your browser, you can use custom CSS files with different extensions for Chrome and Firefox, but the desktop version of Spotify isn't exactly the most customizable thing. What we need to do is install a specific extension for it to go ahead and customize it to our heart's content. So that's exactly what I'll show you now. To download and install this, you'll be using a lot of PowerShell. If you don't know what that is, it's exactly like the command prompt window. We'll be typing in quite a bit, and in the description down below, you'll find links and text that we'll be copying and referring to in the future. So to begin, open up PowerShell by hitting start and typing in power. Then we'll be opening Windows PowerShell. This is the main place that we'll be doing most of the work that we do with Spicetify. I'll make this nice and big. I'll keep this open in the background as we'll keep coming back to this. Note that you can also run commands that we'll be running here in the run dialog by holding start and pressing R, then typing them in here. And if you'd like to, you can also run them up here in any explorer, such as CMD, which is the command to open command prompt as such. So you could run Spicetify commands up here. And of course, inside of any other command line, such as command prompt over here, though it's a little bit more limited for specific things that we'll see later. Anyways, without further ado, what is Spicetify? Well, in the description down below, you'll find a link to Spicetify CLI with over 8.3 thousand stars, 500 commits, and it's still pretty alive with the latest release coming out yesterday, 2.6.4. Scrolling down on this page, you'll see a little bit of information followed by a bunch of different informative links. Now this is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, but I'll only be showing you the Windows version in today's video. If you'd like to get more information, you can check the installation and basic usage tabs over here, which link you across to the Spicetify wiki. On the installation page over here, you'll find the command that we'll be using that you'll also find in the description down below. Windows. We'll be installing it with PowerShell using a pre-built binary. All you have to do is copy this command either from here by clicking the button on the right, selecting it all and copying it, or from the description down below. Paste it into PowerShell and hit enter. Notice that invoke web request and other things like that are separated with pipes, those vertical characters, and you'll need to do that in PowerShell rather than command prompt as they are specific to PowerShell. From here, you can see we can run Spicetify help to get started, which will give us all of the commands that we can use with Spicetify. We can customize the Spotify client UI and functionality using this program. Chainable commands, backup, apply, update, restore, clear, followed by a bunch of different ones, including a restart to restart the Spotify client and a couple more down here that we'll get to maybe later. What exactly can we do with this? Well, now that you've installed it, you won't really see anything different. The only thing you'll notice is that inside of PowerShell, if we run Spice to Fire, we get a response. And if we open up our file browser, head across to C users, followed by our username, you'll see a brand new Spice to Fire directory, dot Spice to Fire, and Spicetify CLI down here. Both of these folders are added by Spicetify and they both contain a themes folder where we'll be installing themes. We won't be dropping it into Spicetify CLI as this is where most of the program files are. Instead, we'll be using .spicetify here. Inside of here, we have backup custom apps, extensions, extracted and themes, as well as a config file that you can edit, which we'll refer to later on as well. Awesome. With all of that out of the way, why hasn't it done anything to Spotify? Well, that's because we haven't activated it just yet. Having a look back at the Spicetify GitHub, you'll see basic usage. And the basic usage page over here shows you run with no command once to generate the config file, which we did earlier. If you haven't done it already, simply run Spicetify. Then we'll be running Spicetify backup, apply, enable dev tool as such, assuming that this said success. So I'll paste it in, of course, copying it first and hit enter. Then after it runs through and patches Spotify, you'll see that Spotify has restarted and now you've just been flashbanged. It's in light mode. I'll go ahead and minimize this for now. From now on, after changing colors in color.ini or CSS and users.css, you need to just run Spicetify update. And I'm quite sure if Spotify updates, it will probably get rid of any themes you have. You'll either need to run Spicetify update 
or Spice to Fire Apply. One of those two, maybe both of them, maybe one. Anyways, now that it's been installed, we have a theme. Of course, I'm not going to show it to you again because I care about your eyes. If you'd like a different theme, which I would highly recommend, in the description down below, you'll find a link to Spice to Fire Themes. This is an open source repository that simply collects a bunch of different themes. And of course, you can get them from other locations. This isn't by any means official, but it's the most official that we have available now. You'll find some info on the actual project itself, as well as a preview of all themes in themes.md, although this isn't really all themes, which I'll get to in a moment. You see Burnt Sienna, Default, Dreary, followed by a bunch of different sub-themes or different styles for it, and Dribblish over here, which is a very popular one that takes a couple of extra steps to install, but I'll show you in a moment, as well as Fluent, One Punch, Sleek, and I think that's about it. Turntable, zero. Yeah, that's it. To begin, I'll go ahead and install a simple theme that doesn't require any extensions, such as Burnt Sienna. I'll simply copy the title up here, and because it doesn't have any smaller text below it, it only has one version. Burnt Sienna is the theme, and if it has any different color schemes inside of it, they'll be named right below it. So Dreary, Bib, Psycho, etc. This is just Burnt Sienna. How do we activate it? Well, first of all, we need to download the Spicetify themes folder, as we haven't done that, and this is a separate project. Head back to the Spicetify themes page, this one here, and click code in the top here, followed by download zip. When the file downloads, which will take some time, we'll open it up with any file explorer. There we go. I'll open up Spicetify themes master, and you can see a bunch of different themes in here. The theme is a folder that contains at least two files, color.ini and user.css. Ones like Dribblish over here, you'll see contain a whole bunch more, but again, we'll get there in a moment. What we need to do is extract all of the folders here from underscore extra down to zero, or of course, whatever files you have. You can ignore .github and these files over here. We need to extract them into the Spicetify folder. So, C uses your username dot Spicetify themes. We'll drag and drop all of these into this themes folder as such, and we can close the zip that we downloaded. We've now installed a bunch of themes, but none of them will be active. In order to actually make one of them active, you need to head back a folder, open the config file, and edit current theme over here to the theme that you'd like. Note that this is only for themes that only have one different style, such as Burnt Sienna, rather than these ones down here. But I'll get there in a moment. To activate Burnt Sienna, a theme with only one skin or color scheme, all you have to do is replace this text here from whatever it is to Burnt Sienna. Current theme equals Burnt Sienna. Save it. And inside of any command prompt window or anywhere else you can run commands, type in spice to five, apply, and hit enter to restart and update Spotify. As you can see, we have the theme installed, though I seem to be missing the font required for it. If you'd like, you can open up the user.css file, edit it, replace the font with one of your own, save it, and run spice to five, apply to update the pack. Anyways, I don't really like this theme, so let's go to something you might be more interested in, such as the incredibly popular Dribblish one. This, of course, requires at least a couple more steps to do. If we head to the base directory of Spice Divide Themes, you'll see all of the different folders for all of the different skins. If we open up a folder, you'll usually find a readme inside of it with some screenshots of the actual theme itself with a bunch of different skins and color schemes as well as maybe features such as extensions like a resizable sidebar, customizable sidebar, playlist folder image, etc. The Dribblish pack over here has a very nice command inside of it to install Spicetify and Dribblish and activate it, but because we already have Spicetify themes installed, all we need to do is a manual install, which we'll be using the Windows section over here for. Copy all of these commands here, either manually or by clicking Copy, Paste them into a PowerShell window as such, and upon doing so, it'll restart Spotify, though it shouldn't be working perfectly. You'll probably notice some elements out of place, and it doesn't look the way that it should. In order to fix this, we need to run this over here. As you can see, this requires specific changes, so all we need to do is add these two lines in the patch section of the config file. So copy these two lines here, open up the config file, which we had open earlier, Look for the patch section and paste it in right below. Save it and close it. Running Spice Defy Apply. You may notice some changes, you may not, but now we've successfully installed Spice Defy completely. So, of course, you can get to customizing it, 
shrinking down your sidebars nice and small, etc, etc. So you'll probably want a bit more out of it rather than this bright green display if this isn't necessarily for you. How do we get one of these other themes activated? Well, scrolling down on this page, you'll also see change color schemes. All we have to do is run a command. Spicedify config color underscore scheme space the scheme name. All that this does is it adds or changes a setting in the settings file right over here and adds it as such, although it adds it more like that. Anyway, running the command does that, and it's a lot simpler than referring back to this config file always. So I'll run spicedify config color scheme space, followed by one of the color schemes in this file, which is currently base white dark Dracula, nor dark, nor light, samurai, and purple. If you scroll up, there may be a couple more, such as Gravbox, which wasn't listed down below. So you may have to do some manual exploring, which is why I say it doesn't seem to feature all of them that are in the package. You may need to do some manual exploration. Anyways, I'll enter the command inside of PowerShell space, followed by the color scheme that I want. I'll go with, say, Samurai. So I'll copy the name Samurai, and I'll paste it in here. Spicify config color scheme Samurai. Hit enter. Spicify apply, and Spotify will then restart with the different color scheme installed. Awesome, it's working exactly as you would hope. Now, of course, you may be satisfied with this, you may not be. Maybe Driblish isn't for you. If you try and install another theme at this point, you may run into a couple of issues, such as items being in different places than they should be, etc. If you've installed something like Driblish with different extensions, you'll need to scroll down on the README section and look for something like this. Otherwise, if you don't see it, you may have to go through some manual effort to figure out what files we need to remove. To remove the Driblish script, simply run the following commands. Spicedify config extensions driblish.js minus. I'll copy this, paste it in, enter, spicedify apply, of course spelling it correctly, and Spotify will then restart with Driblish uninstalled. So of course we can't move the sidebars, or at least that left sidebar, and we've now uninstalled the extensions from it. If you'd like it, you can add it back, remove the minus, run apply once again, and we've now reinstalled the extensions from it. Nice and simple. I'm only really showing you this as you may come into issues such as different extensions from different themes, ruining other themes that you may choose to install. Now, of course, there are a bunch of different themes that we can install from here, but maybe you don't like one of these other themes, which you can always change to by copying the big name for it, the theme, and the color scheme, such as dark. You can open up the config file and paste it into here, remembering color scheme as well, which will either be dark or whatever the color scheme is listed as here, or it'll just be base with a capital B if they don't have any sub themes like this mentioned, color schemes, whatever you want to call them. After setting both of them, you can save this file or you can run the same command that we mentioned earlier, which was spice to fire config current theme, followed by the theme's name itself, which in my case was, what was it? Fluent space color scheme and doc enter spice to fire apply. It's now been edited and applied. Awesome. Now, of course, you may be a fan of it. You may not be a fan of it. You can always customize them later. And if you'd like a specific guide on that, do let me know. So of course, it's really up to you. The absolute last thing that I'm going to mention in this, besides actually uninstalling this if you don't want it anymore, is custom themes that you won't find on the Spice to Fire themes GitHub, such as this. Over here, I have a theme that isn't official by any means, but it's something that someone else created. It's not very popular, but it is Dracula that I like, and it looks like a, a pretty okay color scheme that I may like to use. All you have to do and have to make sure of is that there's a folder name with the theme's name in it, and then at least color.ini and user.css. To install these, all you have to do is extract the folder into here, such as the Dracula folder that contains these two files into the themes directory here, so it looks like one of these, and then edit config.ini to reflect the same things. Current theme is the name of the folder, in this case, Dracula, and if they don't tell you what the color scheme's name is, you'll have to check color.ini and look at the very top, it'll usually be base. So to install this one, I have to go ahead and download the repos zip as such, open it up and then extract the Dracula folder from here 
containing color and user.css and place them in the themes folder as such. Of course, if it doesn't have a parent folder, you'll need to create one, give it a name and place these files inside of it. And we can edit the config or of course run the command, which will be spice to fire config current theme Dracula, the name of the folder, color scheme, which will usually be base. Enter spice to fire apply. And then Spotify will restart with the custom theme. Of course, these look a little bit out of place. That's probably the dribblish extension coming into play. So I'll go ahead and run the command to remove that again, which was here. Spice to fire apply. And things seem to be fixed. That's exactly why you may need to uninstall dribblish or custom extensions like that if you choose to install them. Anyways, it may be something you like, it may not be. You can create your own ones, etc. But I'll probably be sticking to something like this, or maybe one of the sleek designs from the bottom here under Fluent, or maybe One Punch or Sleek. Now, if you're done with Spicetify, how do you exactly uninstall it? Well, unlike normal programs, uninstalling it wouldn't really work. And of course, if you do manage to delete the files, your Spotify will still be themed. So in order to actually get rid of Spicetify completely, you need to open up a new file browser, navigate across to C users, your username, and then locate the .spicetify folder and the Spicetify CLI folder. What you're gonna do is delete both of these folders completely. After doing so, Spicetify will be uninstalled, but it won't be gone. Spotify will still have a theme. In order to clear Spotify's theme completely, you need to navigate across to where Spotify is installed. The easiest way to do this is to open up Task Manager while Spotify is running with Control Shift and Escape, Processes, then Locate Spotify, right click one of these tasks here, open File Location, and you'll be inside of the Spotify folder. Simply select everything with Control A, hold Control, and then we'll be unselecting Users and prefs over here so that you can keep your preferences and your current login for Spotify when you reinstall it. You'll need to delete the rest of these files here or a couple of specific files. It's a bit difficult to know exactly what files to delete, but you'll be deleting all of them. It seems like this apps folder over here was the most recently edited one. So it may just be that, but deleting everything to be sure. So everything but users and prefs. And then when you've deleted these files, Head across to the next link in the description down below to re-download the Spotify installer. Simply download it, run it, and you're all set. But anyways, that's about it for this quick video. Again, if you'd like to see how to customize them for yourself and you'd like me to do a tutorial video, do let me know down below and I'll probably get around to it. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.